Hey everyone, hope you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel is Finding Value. Uh, today we're gonna do our daily technical analysis updated commodities, work our way through the dollar, yields, precious metals, and commodities and ETFs that I follow. If you guys need any help uh, investing or navigating these markets, definitely check out finding-value.com. You can see it over there. I have become a platinum member, use the word discount in the coupon code. Join our community, love to have you with us. And just as a reminder, we have a platinum question and answer session at 5 p.m. Sunday coming up this weekend. Uh, so let's dive in here, see what's going on with the market. So we've got DXY, which is the relative strength indicator of the dollar. It's still continuing to head lower uh, in the short term. And I, and I think that will continue until it doesn't. Um, and there we are on the, on the daily candlesticks down day to day lots of volatility to me it still looks like this trend's intact for lower dxy uh, looking at the 10-year yields this can also impact the strength of the dollar um, we've come and pulled back with uh, the 10-year yield here we pulled back quite a bit today 1.77 percent on the dailies and we don't see a huge reversal yet um, we could be uh, lining up for one. Again, we don't see it in the candlesticks yet. So I'm going to continue to say that this is uh, with a downward bias towards the 10-year yield. The 30-year yield also uh, was lower by 1.17%. Uh, we do have a little wick at the bottom. We are coming up to a support area. So we're going to have to see where this thing goes uh, next. Are we going to bounce here and go up or are we going to break, uh, break and break back down below that support trend line uh, if we go lower that is generally a tailwind for um commodity well i should say tailwind for precious metals uh, especially when the yield curve uninverts so when the 10-year goes down at a faster pace than the 30-year yield uh, so that's those are tailwinds for precious metals and that's what we're looking for to see if those tailwinds are going to continue Bond prices slightly higher today, 0.22% on the 20-year bond. It's right against resistance. So we'll see if we can break through that resistance and if yields are going to break down off those support levels that we've got. TYX, TNX ratio, this looks actually quite favorable for a move higher, which is favorable for uh, precious metals. Um, last time this curve kind of uninverted here precious metals did very well in that type of market condition and this does look like we are ready to go higher in this ratio which means precious metals could do very well in the future we also have a broken down trend here uh, so that looks good for uh, that yield curve to move higher which is the curve uh, normalizing or uninverting the u.s two-year yield it's still continuing to fall and it looks like we could fall further on the two year yield here. And I'm looking at the selling pressure here, like kind of getting hit on our head and no real buying pressure in here to, to, to push us back to the upside. So um, that this to me looks like it, it wants to go lower, uh, which is gonna be a tailwind for precious metals. So look at the CRB index. The CRB index is ripping to the upside today. Um, we had oil rip higher, obviously. Uh, with that's with OPEC uh, cutting back production. So CRB index actually looks really strong. We could see a move higher in the CRB index. Is this the beginning of wave three? It could be. Uh, I'd obviously, no one knows, but it could be. And and wave three is the big Kahuna wave. It, it's the wave that uh, is going to be a big old biggest portion of this commodity bull market. Is generally wave three. If we're going to get this big wave three. It could be underway. The CRB to S and P 500, uh, it is bouncing a little bit today. But again, is this a double bottom? I, I'm not going to really conclude anything in, in the short term here yet. Let's watch it and see where this thing uh, goes. This is a little double top there. Uh, again, look for wave three where commodities outperform in that period. Uh, are we getting to the bottom of wave three or wave two to turn into wave three? That's what we're all wanting to know. And we won't know that until we look backwards, but I think we're getting pretty close. Uh, if oil takes off here, if gold and silver take off, 
and we get kind of a, an everything rally, I, I would say it's probably the likelihood that, that we're going to do some crazy stuff in commodities. Gold heading higher. Again, we were talking about the conditions for gold to head higher in. Um, they were present today, so that's good. Uh, very short term, you can see this guy is bouncing back and forth. This could be a false breakout where we launch on up. But again, I'm not going to make that conclusion. Let's let's break out of this thing. Let's start heading higher uh, where gold starts sailing, hopefully. But we're squeezing up right now. Silver just moving sideways. Uh, this could be considered a little bloody nose. We did get some support, buying support when it tried to sell off, so it still looks really good. And platinum just moving sideways today, uh, down 0.55%, but basically sideways. We do have resistance up here as we've been trying to trade through that and haven't been successful trading through it for a little while now. XEU to gold ratio. Now this is really positive. This is the gold and silver mining companies outperforming gold. It looks really good. We've got a nice little uh, kind of trend going here where we could break on through this guy. Let's hope for that thing to break, guys. This is going to be a big deal when, it, when this thing breaks. A big long-term downtrend where gold and silver mining companies could outperform gold. And if gold's going a lot higher, gold and silver mining companies are going to look really, really good. So GDX, uh, there's GDX moving on higher. There's the dailies. Uh, it's still looking good. Let's hope that momentum can keep going. SilJ also breaking out of this kind of falling wedge you can maybe even say that this is a flag pattern where we're in another kind of nice big move out of it fingers crossed uh, but we're breaking to the upside for silj that's looking fantastic we're still at resistance of this guy going across lots of selling pressure through that area so we have to get through it uh crude oil up 6.33 percent uh that is up quite a big jump you're probably going to see this come back and do a retest before heading higher so don't be too uh weirded out if we get a pullback towards this breakout area natural gas still heading lower but we've broken this downtrend line and maybe we're just doing a retest here again natural gas has a little bit of you know it's got some inventory uh it, it's got some headwinds ahead of it because of weather over in europe so just let it be. Uh, XOP up about 5%. Again, we got to break th back through this tr uh, trend line to the upside. Otherwise, we could roll over for a little bit and, and fill that gap in. OIH also up 6 bucks, and we do have this big fat gap. Maybe we come back and fill the gap. It's possible. Sprout Uranium Trust. Lots of selling pressure here, guys. This looks like to me that this wants to go lower in the short term. That's a big bearish engulfing pattern. Uh, we've got lots of selling pressure here, and the buying pressure wasn't overwhelming. So, you know, I still think that we could potentially have a washout to the downside still. URNM, uh, we're right back to that resistance line. Again, I, I'm going to hold my judgment here. I want to see where this thing goes. We've got lots of selling pressure back here. This buying pressure isn't the strongest out there. This is a lot of selling pressure. It's got to work its way through. Tan still squeezing up. It's coming right up to the corner of this bad boy. Look at that thing, right in the corner. Uh, copper's actually looking pretty good today. COPX, we're breaking out to the upside. We could see a run to the upside for copper, or at least COPX, the copper miners. So that's looking actually quite positive. We've got lithium right at resistance support. We've got REMX right at resistance support. That's the big boy right here going across. We've got the S&P 500 uh, heading slightly higher today. It looks really good. It finished pretty, pretty strong towards its closing price. Looks good to go higher. Uh, we've got the NASDAQ putting in a bloody nose today. That still looks good to go higher. Not much selling pressure. No reversal candlesticks. <laughs> Still looks good. Merging markets up 0.2%. Still looking all right for a move on up. Doesn't look too bad. XHB, the home builders, also up today. Breaking out of that trend line, still looks good to go higher. Uh, Moo, this guy, I think we're going to tag this and head back lower. That's where I think we're going to go. We'll see what happens, or we could just head lower. 
copper down a little bit, but down basically coming back and on support. So doesn't look bad. Lumber right on support of this big long trend line from the early 90s, this big guy going across. Uh, it's going to probably stay here and hopefully it will uh, get stuck here. If this breaks back down, goes below, we could see some pressure in the markets, especially when gold goes higher, uh, that we've got fear in the market and the markets are slowing down in home builders. Uh, iron ore still kind of, it still looks good. Maybe we come into a retest back down in this area down there for iron ore. We've got nickel, nickel uh, slightly lower today, down about a percent. Not much to really say there. Aluminum just moving sideways for the most part. Uh, yeah, maybe we pull back a little bit in the short term, but we've, we've just been grinding sideways down here. Baltic dry index slightly lower. I do think that's going to go a little bit lower uh, and come back to this area down here. We've got Newcastle coal heading on higher up almost 10%. So it was trying to put in that bottom. Are we going to get a move higher? You know, with energy going up, coal's probably going to get pulled up with it. And then we've got Ethereum uh, slightly, just moving slightly to uh, sideways. Same with Bitcoin, just moving sideways in this kind of pattern there. Uh, but that's all I've got for today, guys. Um, yeah, you just got to wait and kind of see what things do. Uh, I think, you know, oil might pull back, give you one last retest. Gold's looking very strong. We're right at the breakout point for a big move to the upside. That's the one that I probably have the most, I don't know, has my most attention. It's gold, uh, just precious metals in general, gold, silver, uh, and platinum. Uh, copper still looking good. Everything still looks pretty good. So nothing really to worry about at this time. We do, well, we do have yields dropping. That could be worrisome uh, as there could be fear stepping back into the market. But with that fear and yields coming back, uh, eventually what you'll probably see is a more money being printed, more uh, liquef liquefying the system, so to speak, which would be inflationary. <laughs> uh, and then we start this whole cycle over again. We go from uh, money printing to inflation to disinflation. And then depending on how fast they reflate it, it just starts the cycle again and again and again. Uh, but that's what I've got for today, guys. Um, hopefully you guys enjoy the content. Give me a thumbs up for it. Subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the website if you haven't. Uh, love to have you in the community. And we'll catch you next time. This is Finding Value.